Hi, I'm Darren. These are my hands. And what's in the box? Shake a shake a. It's the world's funniest sports puzzle by Sergio Aragonez. Well, I'm extremely happy to have this added to my collection. It's not something that I've seen very often come up for sale. In fact, the only one that I could find on eBay as I record this video was an old auction from almost two years ago where the seller was asking 75 bucks for it. Now, here's the catch. My puzzle is missing one piece, but just between me and you, I got this puzzle for $9.99. It's a bargain, I'd say. Okay. So what's this puzzle all about? Well, it's a jigsaw puzzle and the box claims it's 18 by 24 inches in size and 550 pieces. We'll have to assemble this puzzle to debunk those fraudulent claims, but more on that in a little bit. This puzzle has two very unique claims to fame. First, it's the world's funniest sports puzzle by Sergio Aragonez. And second, it's a two-sided puzzle. Two sides. Now, this is the first time I've ever heard of a two-sided puzzle. What that means is we need to get some pieces out of here. What that means is each piece has images on both sides put together. So not only do you have to figure out how to put the puzzle together, but when you're looking at the pieces, you have to decide whether you're looking at the front side of the puzzle image or the back side. And when you're done, you can take the puzzle apart and put it back together again to make the image on the other side of the box. Two puzzles. Something I immediately wondered was, if I just flip this completed puzzle over, will the other side be completed too? Or will I have to rearrange the pieces to get the correct image? I was kind of hoping that that would be the case, but I guess it'd be really tricky to print aligning the image on each individual piece, not to mention coming up with a jigsaw pattern that assembles in multiple configurations. The second unique claim to fame is that this is the world's funniest sports puzzle. I have a couple questions about that. First, who sanctions this claim? Is there a Guinness World's Record category for funny sports puzzles? And second, this puzzle is over 40 years old. I wonder if there have been any other challenges to the title in the past four decades, or is world's funniest sports puzzle, such a niche category that there are no other rivals. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching that time lapse of me assembling the puzzle. And now that it's together, let's talk about the images on the puzzle. Each side has a number of comic vignettes, pantomimes, if you will, of funny sports situations. On the back side, we have a super tall basketball player with his head going up and through the net, preventing the opposing team from scoring. Across this top edge, we have what looks like a running race, but the racers are being incentivized to great speed by a vicious dog chasing them. Down the right side, we have a pole vaulter being distracted mid-vault by a woodpecker drilling a hole in his pole while the judges look on. And down in the bottom right corner, something funny is happening at the soccer game. I admit that I'm a bit unsure as to what that funny thing is, but I think the joke is that the goalkeeper, this guy, is grabbing the round head of one of his opponents, having mistaken it for the soccer ball. Let me know if you've got any other insights. In the opposite corner, at the fencing competition, a samurai is coming to do battle, 
not with a bamboo rapier, but with a razor-sharp katana. Above that vignette, we see a tennis court, where the fellow painting the lines has caused one of the tennis players to fall over backwards. I really like the pose of this tennis player on the far side of the net, and we'll come back to him in a moment. Right on top of the tennis match, we see someone participating in an athletics event that I am not totally familiar with. It looks like some combination of shot put and hammer throw, but with a bomb on the end of a string. Oh, look at that. Wikipedia to the rescue. This is the hammer throw, and the hammer used in this sport is not like any of the tools also called by that name. It consists of a metal ball attached by a steel wire to a grip. Although it looks like the Scottish Highland Games version of the hammer throw is a bit more hammer-like. But I digress. To the right of that athletics guy, we have what appears to be a baseball game. But instead of a baseball, maybe that's a bowling ball being pitched to the batter? I'm not quite sure. And lastly, in the middle of the puzzle here, we've got a swimming race with a little baby and a little floaty thing blocking swimmer number three in this lane. Um, I don't know where else to fit this into the video, but I can't tell what's going on with this pinky brown stuff maybe coming out of this swimmer's mouth. I imagine it's supposed to be his arm and splashes of water. It kind of looks like he's projectile vomiting to me. I don't know. And I know I said that I didn't want to spend a lot of time looking at the other side of the puzzle until I put it together. But because I love you guys so much, let's flip this over and see what's on the other side. My oh my, I really am looking at this side for the first time. I've looked at the front of the box to prepare myself for this, but this looks a lot better than the faded front of the box. So what's going on? An American football game is being played but rather than being tackled by a giant offense, including a few players that look like gorillas, the quarterback, I know nothing about American football, is handing the football to one of his teammates so he can get walloped. Across the top of the puzzle here, we see a ski jumper flying through the air with a bunch of cameramen also on skis flying alongside him to broadcast his jump. Of course, each of their jumps is at least as impressive as the competitors. In the corner, a game of hockey, and maybe that's a Montreal Canadiens jersey, is being interrupted by an ice fisherman. Whoops, there goes the puck. And below that, whitewater kayaking is being interrupted by a couple of surfers. Or maybe it's the other way around. And down at the bottom here, there's a big pileup in the bicycle race because of this kind cyclist who stops to let an old lady cross the street. Hey, is that the same old lady from the back side of the puzzle who's being dragged along by her vicious dog? I think maybe it is. She just has her hair and dress painted with different colors here. The bottom left corner features a rowing regatta where the boat has been sliced in half, but you don't know why because of cropping problems that we'll talk about later. But looking at the front of the box, we see a submarine has gone by slicing the boat in half. Above the regatta, we have a hurdle race where a short runner is zipping ahead of the other racers by running underneath the hurdles. In the middle, we see a Jai Alai player. Yeah, I had to look that up. It's like that game in Tron, right? Okay. His scoop is filled with fruit, 
And that's funny. Or maybe there's some other significance. Please enlighten me in the comments. And then finally, there's a pommel horse being ridden on by a rodeo cowboy. Because it's like a horse. All right, I'm going to flip this over before I enjoy it too much. Now the sharp-eyed among you might have noticed a few Easter eggs hidden in Sergio's drawings. Maybe you noticed Sergio in the rowing competition. I looked for Sergio on the back side of the puzzle too. Maybe it's a self-caricature in the baseball stands, or maybe it's just a guy with a mustache. I searched the crowds for other hidden secrets, and in the basketball crowd, there are a couple of interesting things that are on the box, but got cropped out of the puzzle. Here's a guy that might be Sergio. And up there is a fellow wearing a mad t-shirt. Two other prominent characters on the back side of the puzzle had me wondering if Sergio was including some caricatures of his friends from Mad Magazine. Right here, the tennis player. I mentioned him before, and he sure looks familiar to me. Maybe it's just a random guy, but I was referring to him as Al Jaffe while I was assembling the puzzle on a live stream. But it's not quite right. Maybe he's a young Al Jaffe. And how about this large bald guy with the glasses, beard, and mustache up here in the running crowd? He looks too specific to me to just be a guy Sergio drew. I said I thought he might be Bill Gaines in the live stream, but that's not quite either. So I reached out to my friend Patrick, who runs the excellent Flippin' Through YouTube channel, links in all the places. He told me that he didn't think either were mad dudes, but if he had to guess, the tennis player with the pointy goatee might be Nick Meglin, and the bald runner could look a little like Lenny Brenner. Thanks for your assessment, Patrick. Finally, even though this was drawn in 1980, a few years before the first publication of Grew the Wanderer, there are a couple of similar noses and body shapes, especially this hockey player. Corpulent torso, skinny legs, proto grew. All right, let's talk about the physical puzzle itself. You've probably noticed that the line art on the box, the art that Sergio drew, is cropped quite severely for the actual puzzle. In fact, I think it was cropped way more than Sergio knew it would be. I think there was a miscommunication between the puzzle manufacturer about the size and the result was that the aspect ratio of Sergio's art doesn't match the aspect ratio of the puzzle, even in the slightest. Measuring the image on the box, I got dimensions of 23.5 centimeters in height by 34.5 centimeters in length. Now. Actual dimensions don't really matter because we're concerned with the ratio of height to length. If the ratios are the same, or even close, they can be scaled up or down to fit nicely. The aspect ratio of the art is 1 to 1.47, so the length is almost one and a half times that of the height. But the physical puzzle isn't near that ratio. I measured 47 and a half centimeters by 62 and a half centimeters, giving an aspect ratio of one to 1.32. Let me show you two rectangles with those same aspect ratios scaled to have the same height. This wide rectangle represents Sergio's art. This narrower rectangle represents the physical size of the puzzle. So not only did the puzzle printer have to drastically crop Sergio's art from side to side, 
See, if we bring the right side in so we can fit the soccer ball in the puzzle, we have to crop out the leftmost basketball player on the left and most of the tennis player's racket. But of course, it gets even worse. They cropped out some of the top and bottom, bringing the top edge of the puzzle down to the top of the basketball net backboard and the bottom to the soccer player's feet. This means more art on the left side has to be lost, including the entire tennis player's head and racket and the tennis ball and both basketball players on the left too. And we lose Sergio's signature down in the bottom corner and the copyright statement. So that's disappointing. Losing so much of Sergio's wonderful art and the context of some of the jokes he drew. <sighs> Want some more nerdy, math-adjacent stuff with your Sergio Aragonez sports puzzle review? So, a jigsaw puzzle is essentially a grid with wiggly lines and tabs and slots added to the pieces, right? We could count the number of edge pieces across the bottom and multiply by the number of edge pieces on the side and find out exactly how many puzzle pieces there are. So let's do that. And remember what we read on the box, 550 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 pieces across the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 pieces across the edge. 29 times 19 pieces equals 551 pieces. 551 minus my one missing piece, oops, equals 550 pieces. Turns out my puzzle has exactly 550 pieces. So, is this a joke by Sergio? Alas, no. Taking a close read of the box, it states over 550 pieces. And because of things like math, it's hard to get nice round numbers when making a jigsaw puzzle. I'll link to a great video by Stand Up Maths that explains it all. But yeah, over 550 pieces in this case means 551 puzzle pieces. So despite those two minor quibbles, well, the cropping issue really is a bit of a disappointment. As you can see, this is a really neat puzzle. I am so glad Sergio made it and that I have it. Don't you think that it would be a relatively straightforward thing for Sergio to make more puzzles? Wouldn't you love to buy a thousand piece Grew the Wanderer puzzle? What an opportunity! Sergio, let's have one! And one last thing. To those of you who watch my videos all the way to the end, I'm sure you've already subscribed to this channel. And maybe you've left some comments on previous videos. Thank you very much. Several of you have mailed me wonderful Sergio and Gru comics, books, and items over the last year, and I've been able to show many of them off on this channel already. I've also been trying to collect some of the more rare and elusive books and items, like Sergio's sports puzzle, to document and show off to those who might not know about or have not had the opportunity to see them. So, if you're so inclined, and you know that I seldom mention this, I've set up a buy me a coffee, or if you prefer, buy me a comic page, where you can help me out with some of the expenses involved with acquiring these items and producing videos. You can find the link on the GruTube channel page right here on YouTube. So I hope you've enjoyed this nerdy look at the world's funniest sports puzzle by Sergio Aragonez. Take care, everyone. I wonder if one of these other pieces will fit into this hole. Pfft, dummy.